Hi, I'm Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to do machine applique on letters and numbers. Now, machine applique, in case you don't know what that is, is taking fabric using fusible web and fusing it onto another piece of fabric and then doing decorative stitches around the edge. So here's an Easter bunny and then here's a shamrock. So you can do it with just about anything. But in this video, I'm going to show you how to do your applique letters and numbers and you can do it on just about any project that you want to do. Now before we get started, remember to follow me on Instagram and check out my Facebook page. Okay, now let's get started. Now, there's a number of ways you can access letters like this. You might see some in a magazine that you like. You can cut those out and put them in your photocopy or printer at home and take a picture of them in there and enlarge it at the same time to the size you want. Or if in your computer you have a word processor in which you can select different fonts. Fonts means the style of the letter. It might be a handwriting script or big block letters. So select whatever font you want and usually right next to the font button is the enlargement button. So enlarge it to the size you want and then print it out. If you still can't get it as large as you want, some of your printers at home have an enlargement feature and you can make them really, really big. So once you've got your letters all printed out, go ahead and cut them out. I've already cut out the number one. Take that number one and get your fusible webbing. So here's my number one. I cut it out. Now, you're going to turn it over and place it on the side of your fusible webbing that your package says to draw it on. For instance, mine has these little blue grid lines. That's the side I would draw on. So now it's kind of hard to trace around this paper. So let me show you a really little trick I have for doing that. Take a piece of scotch tape and tape it right across like that. Now it's going to be really easy to either cut around it now. Now I don't see that good, so I traced around it like I did here. Once you've got it traced, then go ahead and cut it out. But make sure you leave at least a quarter of an inch around the number. Don't cut on the lines just yet. Now take that piece and get your fabric you want to put it on. Now this is the front and now I got it back side is up. Pull off the paper that's on the back so that you have that sticky tacky side right there and then go ahead and place it on the back of your fabric. Then finger press it down real good all over. Then take your scissors and now you can cut on your drawn line. So cut it out and this is what you have. There you go. But remember when you first did this it was in reverse. That's so that the glue gets on the correct side. Take your fabric you want to put it on. Take off your last piece of paper on there and put it down. Finger press it down. Then follow the instructions on your package of fusible webbing. Mine says to put a damp cloth over it. Set my iron to cotton with steam. Hold the iron down for 15 seconds and then it's permanently fused on. Now as far as your applique stitches go, here I've printed out the name Sue and the numbers one, two, three. Now on this I used a small satin stitch on the name and then I used a different applique stitch on the numbers. So you can see you can get really creative. You can use different pieces of fabric, use up your scraps on each one, make it look very whimsical. You can put names on your tote bags, pillows, whatever you're making. It's a lot of fun and an easy process to do. Now that you understand 
how to get your letters and numbers cut out, get the fusible web on the back side of it, I'm going to give you a few suggestions and tips on how to put it onto an existing project or a future project that you're working on. For instance, this is a tote bag I'm putting together. And this strip of fabric is going to be at the top of the tote bag. And I want the word quilter on it. So use a ruler to help you center it and evenly space it in the center of this piece of fabric. As you're arranging your letters and or numbers, Remember, if you don't like how it looks, you can still lift it off and rearrange it and finger press it down. Then, of course, after finger pressing it, go to your ironing board and fuse it on. Follow package instructions. Remember, you'll need a hot iron with steam and a damp cloth. I also recommend, after you've fused it on, let it cool down and the glue set because if it's still kind of damp, it could be sticky and it might gum up your needle. Then put your stabilizer behind it, either the thin paper or use other stabilizer that you purchased and select a stitch that you want to do around it. I'm going to do a small satin stitch. I always like to test out my stitches first. As you can see, this was kind of loose. I could see between the stitches, and I kept doing it until I got it to the width and the length that I liked. When I'm doing letters and numbers, I prefer to use my open toe presser foot so I can see exactly where I'm stitching. In the back of my presser foot, right back here behind the needle, there's a red mark so I know exactly where to place the edge of my letter here. So I've got that red mark right on the edge and I'm going to just start stitching. So I'm going to keep that red mark right there on the center. When you get to a corner, go a little ways past, just a few stitches. Leave the needle down on the outside of the letter or number. Turn it, and you want to make sure that that red mark is on the edge. Mine's not quite there yet. I'm going to turn it back and do a couple of more stitches. Now I'm going to try it again. Now I see the red mark is centered on the edge. So now I'm going to go down the other edge. So you would do the same thing on every corner. Always leave it down on the outside. Make sure you go a few stitches past and then turn. Make sure it's in alignment, that red mark, and go down. When going around curves, you want to slowly turn your fabric. And again, before you turn, always leave the needle down on the outside. So I'm going to just slowly turn. Sometimes you need to let the machine stop, turn your fabric just, just a tiny little bit, and continue stitching. And you would just slowly go around. And when you're going on curves, it's kind of hard sometimes to keep that red mark right there on the edge. So that's why just take your time when doing curves. Before you start stitching the project together, make sure you remove the tearaway stabilizer. So after you've got your letters or numbers fused and stitched on, then you can go ahead and begin putting it into your project. If you're interested in making a tote bag that you can do machine applique on, play this video until a green screen appears 
And on that green screen will be a link that says tote bags. Also, if you want to learn more about machine applique, there will also be a link on there that says machine applique lesson one. Waiting for Maria to stop scratching. Sorry, I'm, well, I'm waiting for like action or something. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'll be a catering if anybody needs it. <laughs> This video, click on thumbs up and don't for click dip. Oh, Cheryl. Up, you need a script to read off of. That. Yeah, or something. Come on, come on, come on. Let's go, this let's go, let's video, go. click on thumbs up. Maria, your pillow's wrong. <laughs> Just turn your hands to the other side. There you go. <laughs> yes. If you like this video, click on thumbs up. And don't forget to click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Click on the little bell and enter your email address so you receive future emails about my latest video. If you're not receiving those emails, go to your cell phone or iPad, click on settings, and turn notifications in the on position. This is Maria, this is Manny, this is Jamie, and I'm Cheryl. So glad you came to my sewing room. See you next time, and happy sewing!